Well, I thought I'd do a short uh, video, uh, hay update video. So I thought I'd talk about uh, what's going on with our haying and also want to talk about my channel uh, just a little bit. So we've been pretty busy in the uh, month of June, obviously cutting and uh, getting, getting our first cut of hay in. But uh, right after we got it cut, the rain started, and uh, up until this week, it's just kind of been raining continuously. We've had a few breaks, but uh, not good haying weather if you're if you're haying uh, thunderstorms and you know not uh, good windows to make hay in. So uh, one of the things we've been doing, you can see the tracks going up through here. Uh, we sprayed our hay fields for uh, broadleaf weeds, and you might be able to see some. Uh, wilting going on out there with some plants. But we're trying to get a good clean second cutting and uh, I don't know that we'll get a third. We'll let this go until we start seeing stems. And one of the things we have around here is a grass called grease. People call it grease grass. Uh, some people call it purple top. And sometimes it'll come in in late uh, summer, so that 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 kind of gives a stemmy look to the hay, which customers don't like. And again, we don't often get a second cut of hay. Uh, most of this is Timothy, and it's, it has a way of going dormant, and then we don't get anything. And if it doesn't go dormant, then uh, the weather has a way of turning real dry, and we don't get anything either. So, uh, but it's looking pretty good right now. And if we can keep the weeds out of it, uh, we should have a nice uh, second cutting. So we're going to have our first hay customer coming, uh, I think, on Friday, uh, July the 3rd, the afternoon of the 3rd. So need to start getting the, uh, the grass mowed. It's been heavy. And need to get these wagons out of here and uh, just kind of get our barn shaped up so that it, you know, we look like we'd, we know what we're doing, whether we do or not. Uh, our customers are horse customers, and they typically, uh, you know, a visual is very important to them. You know, nice looking hay, uh, green and clean. But, you know, it's it's helpful if the grounds around the barn and the barn look pretty good, too. I think it, insp it uh, uh, inspires a little bit of confidence that we kind of have a clue about what we're doing. So we have our hay stacked from uh, first cutting, and there's a few uh, bad bales over here that uh, we'll uh, have some customers take those off their hands for, uh, when I say bad bales, they're not horse quality bales of hay. But we've got hay stacked, and uh, we're going to have the customers take the hay off of this end so that we're taking hay out of the center of the barn so we can continue to pile wagons in here and unload from the front on our second cutting hay. I've got uh, teff grass planted in this field right here. And uh, I'm pretty skeptical about whether any of it's going to come up. Maybe it will, but uh, it was old seed to start with. I had nothing to lose by planting it. and uh, But right now the lamb's quarters seem to be doing pretty good, and I didn't plant any of those. Got a bunch of uh, old pallets we took out of the barn and need to get those over to the burn pile. That's one of the chores I got. This hay from the other end of the barn from where I was standing earlier, uh, it's got a little sun on it and that hay looks right uh, bleached. But when I crack it open, there's some green hay in there. That's some beautiful hay. This is probably the best hay that we've ever baled. And when I say the best hay, it's the most weed-free hay. It's, it's the cleanest hay. We baled it early, uh, early enough that uh, depending on which field it came from, there were either minimal Timothy heads coming from the boot or none. And... Uh, so it's really soft. This hay is really soft. And we forage test our hay. And the values that came back 
are just really, really good. And so uh, one of our customers that we try to target are uh, horse owners that have horses with metabolic issues, insulin resistance, uh, laminitis, if I pronounce that right, Cushing's, things like that. So this hay is extremely uh, good for those horses. It, if, it, it has the attributes uh, that they need. This kind of brings me to where I want to talk about uh, our YouTube channel. We're not like a typical uh, video blog. While we make videos of stuff that we're doing, uh, just the uh, demands of time make it difficult to format and put a video up uh, every time we do one on the same day or the next day and even the next week. I got a lot of videos in the can. Uh, I need to uh, kind of format and get them up on YouTube. I appreciate that you're patient with me on that. Uh, I just got a whole variety of videos that uh, go beyond just cutting and tedding, raking and baling hay. To uh, have a farm like ours, uh, even though we're not into cattle and chickens and pigs uh, anymore, uh, we still have quite a variety of things uh, going on up here, and so I'm trying to capture uh, as much of that as I reasonably can. Uh, it's not going to be uncommon that there's a lag between the time we take a video and when we post it. And, you know, don't be surprised if you get a winter video in the summer and a summer video in the winter, and uh, they will not always be in order. So... You know, I might have a video baling hay, and then I might have a video, I don't know, doing something else. But uh, I hope the content is uh, good, and hope you enjoy it. One of the things we haven't got to yet is uh, what I call the gleaner phase of our hay, and that's where we come into these little patches and strips like are going down through here and uh, we we cut it and bale it up for uh, goat and cow hay and uh, the the rain has kept us uh, out of our fields since our first cut and like I said it's just now uh, starting to dry out a little bit and uh, so we'll probably get into you know the, the gleaner side of hay but on the other hand, I'm thinking about waiting a little bit. Uh, we may not cut this uh, for a good long while because uh, the more vol this will be a one-time cut, and the more volume I get of undergrowth, the more bales I'll get. So uh, while it looks kind of trashy, you know, against our buildings and uh, on our farm, it's. Uh, you know, from a business standpoint, uh, since we're not getting top dollar for hay like this, then it's advantageous to us to uh, try to get as many bales as we can. So the more leafy undergrowth we get, the more bales we'll have and we can sell. And uh, a lot of people wouldn't fool with this. They'd just run a bush hog over it. But during our gleaner phase of haying, uh, we can make enough money to pay our diesel and you know, some other things that uh, it all adds up, I guess is what I'm saying. I mentioned the weather, and it has been raining a lot, and it's actually been flooding uh, some. But uh, it's starting to dry out a little bit now, but uh, there's been a lot of hay since we cut ours on the ground and gotten rained on. Uh, I'm seeing very, very few square bales being made, a few here and there, but it's it's like they drag out the square baler and they make a a wagon load or a couple of pickup truck loads and the rest of it is, is going into round bales, which is good for us because, you know, we make and sell square bales of hay. So I kind of like to see those round bales. So for July, uh, I don't know that we're going to cut, uh, take a second cutting in July, as I mentioned earlier, even with our gleaner hay. Uh, I want to try to get as much growth as I can, and as I mentioned earlier out here and in our other fields where we'd be going after a second cut, I'm, I'm looking for stems 
uh, especially from this uh, grass. People call it grease grass, purple top. Uh, if we start seeing those things, uh, we'll try to jump in here and cut it. Uh, we definitely want some leafy grass. And uh, the other thing I'm looking for is if things start turning dormant, uh, we start seeing uh, the tips of the grass turning, uh, you know, brown. If it looks like the, the whole field is going to just kind of go dormant on me, uh, we'll jump in here and uh, cut it. But right now I'm content to uh, let it uh, grow. So that kind of rounds out the uh, July hay update video and uh, kind of give you an idea of what's going on as we uh, uh, go into the first part of July. And I also wanted to just talk about my channel a little bit and uh, why we kind of do what we do as far as releasing our videos. And uh, But stay tuned. There's uh, content coming. And hope you enjoy your videos. Again, uh, subscribe. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the little bell icon to be alerted. Uh, feel free to leave comments. And we'll talk to you later.